world's oldest national broadcasting organization. And these are its best bits. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was fabulous, darling. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 BBC shows. Is that everything? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you want to get up? <laughs> no. <laughs> for this list, we've looked at all BBC shows. There are no criteria limitations in terms of genre or era. As long as the show is on BBC and not ITV or any other British TV channel, then it's in contention. <laughs> Number 10, Faulty Towers. I don't believe it. Neither do I. Perhaps it's a dream. <laughs> It's not a dream, we're stuck with it, right! A show that spans just two series, one in 1975 and one in 1979. There were but 12 episodes of Faulty Towers ever made. But those 12 episodes helped shape modern day comedy, and especially sitcom writing. I'm more nervous, I'm just saying take it easy, all right? All of us, just take it easy, right? Got Nothing's got into it, I'm just saying take it easy, I'm gonna say take it easy without starting a panic, I mean, what is going on here? The show centers on Basil Faulty, played by John Cleese, the erratic owner of the eponymous hotel. What a dump. Set upon the English Riviera and Torquay, Basil is joined by Sybil, his wife, Polly, the chambermaid, and Manuel, the Spanish waiter. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 please. No, 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 no. If it all sounds like the components of a really good joke, that's because it is. Okay, watch. Who's this then? Stop you, my no, no. Number nine, The Graham Norton Show. Let's start the show! Yeah! A multi-award winning chat show, Graham Norton never fails to get big names to appear on his sofa. And he never fails to get them doing ridiculous things in the name of entertainment. And it, it wasn't the person standing next to me in the, in the veil. It, it was the person standing opposite me in the rain. Is it still raining? <laughs> Norton himself rose to fame on the UK's Channel 4, but moved over to the BBC in 2005. Now, the, the premise, the premise, if I'm being honest, before I went to see it, the premise sounded a little dry. And the Graham Norton show itself began life on BBC Two before knocking Jonathan Ross out of BBC One's prestigious Friday night slot in 2010. The rest is hilarious A-list history. Number eight, The Office. God, look at the face. Oh, I can't believe you're touching that. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Look at this. It's not, it's you don't know where that's been, mate. Well, I do know where it's been. It's been in a box, oh, Gary. No, but I mean, at the factory. You don't know what the goes factory. on. The factory. Your amazing mind again. In large part, we have the BBC to thank for Ricky Gervais in general. Extras is probably considered one of the channel's greatest ever comedies. Yeah, and who am I? So the star scare I can never remember. Was that supposed to be funny? You tell me you're in it. But it's just overshadowed on today's countdown by Gervais' first major outing, The Office. Hot love on the hot love highway and going home cause my baby's gone. She's dead. She's not dead. Who'd have thought that the dull daily lives of employees at a slough-based paper company would make for era-defining comedy? No, sorry, it's totally gone. Don't well, worry about it. I'm holding your folder. Sorry, it's fine. Um, I just... No, it's gone. The Office takes a look at the tiny trivialities, details, and desperations of human behavior, and blows them up into a show that can have you laughing, cringing, and crying all at the same time. What have we learned from this? Not to leave your dildo lying around. Don't let it out of your sight, because can wind up anywhere, and it's... Oh, what's that? Number seven, Yes Minister. Now, what are your views on the integrated national transport policy? Uh, I... <laughs> yes Minister takes us behind the scenes at the British government. Said to be the favorite TV program of the then 
actual Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. It follows the eternal struggles of MP Jim Hacker, an aspiring politician who works as Minister of Administrative Affairs. Fortunately, Bernard, most of our journalists are so incompetent they'd have the gravest difficulty in finding out that today is Wednesday. Uh, it's actually Thursday. Most episodes revolve around hackers proposing legislation before having it beaten down or else hackers' desperate attempts to blockade another's ideas. Couldn't you have made it look as though you were going to do something and then done nothing, like you usually do? It's in-house squabbling at its best, and it absolutely gets our vote. There's no doubt in my mind that this committee is on to something. Number six, Monty Python's Flying Circus. People on television treat the general public like idiots. Well, we are idiots. Oh, no, we are not. Well, Em. How do you know you're an idiot? Oh, I can show you. How? Look. Perhaps the most pioneering British comedy show ever made, Monty Python's Flying Circus was originally broadcast between 1969 and 1974. It's with these two happy-go-lucky rogues that our story <laughs> begins. <laughs> For it is they who were run over by Alex Diamond. International crime fighter and playboy. Its blend of observational gags, innuendo, and surreal sketches was unlike anything else before it. And anything similar since is often described as Pythonesque. Polly Pernod, wake up! Polly! Now that's what I call a dead pun. So good it inspired its own adjective. Flying Circus was its very own variety show. A philosophical, intellectual, satirical stab at everyone's sense of humor. The Spanish Inquisition wasn't expected, but Python's place on this list must have been. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. In fact, those who do expect... Our chief weapons are... Our chief weapons are... Um... Uh... Surprise! Surprise! That's it! Stop! Stop! Stop there! Stop there! Stop! There. stop. Number five, Luther. You ever been in a pub or a bar or whatever and, you know, you just know the guy next to you is a cop? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Well, I grew up around soldiers. The way he walks, talks, shoots, that's a soldier. Idris Elba takes the lead for our next show, an award-winning crime series that has achieved international success. Two different murders, completely different M.O.s, separated by a decade and half a country. You know, Burgess must have been 20 years old when he done this. Luther centers on the titular character, Detective Chief Inspector John Luther, a man who is both skilled at his job, but a little psychologically damaged because of it as well. You just need a way in to know what it's like to be him, to not feel anything. This is a police drama, but it's not just about fast cars, gunfights, and the odd explosion. There's a deeper, more complex story here, which has had critics raving with every series released. This thing, this weird thing between us, it has to end. Why? It's not right, Alice. It started off because I was scared of you and I thought if I could be your friend, I could control you. And I can't control you. I'm still scared of you. Number four. Sherlock. Who are you? What do you do? What do you think? I'd say private detective. But? But the police don't go to private detectives. I'm a consulting detective. The only one in the world that invented the job. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes is probably one of the best known and most loved literary characters ever created. And ever since its first series in 2010, Sherlock has turned that classic story into a contemporary saga. My employer is a tremendous fan of your blog. Your employer. Particularly enjoy the one about the aluminium crutch. Thank you. <clears throat> Starring Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman as Holmes and the unerring Watson, the show has achieved massive worldwide success. Set primarily in London, it's often cited as the most quintessentially British thing on TV today. Sorry, are you guys the police? Yeah. Everything all right? Yeah. Welcome to London. The UK's most watched drama series since 2001. It's elementary viewing. Clearly you've got news. If it's about the Leeds triple murder, it was the gardener. Nobody noticed the earring. Number three, Blackadder. Do you think he's a genius? No, sir, I do not. Unless, of course, the definition of genius in his ridiculous dictionary is a fat dullard or wobble bottom. British TV is awash with period dramas, but Blackadder bucked the trend in the 80s, establishing itself as a period comedy. If any woman wants to talk to me, you can warn her. 
The black adder is a venomous reptile, and the women are his prey. The show, which stars Rowan Atkinson as Edmund Blackadder, ran for four full series, which were set at four significant points in British history. Now the explorers punch off the mumbo jumbo land, come home with a tropical disease, a suntan, and a bag of brown lumpy things. <laughs> what was your uncle? Everyone's got a picture of them in the lavatory. However, no matter where you are on the timeline, Blackadder's always cynical, and his dog's body, Baldrick, always has a cunning plan. Baldrick, you look like a deer. Thank you, my lord. You look a bit of a ducky yourself. Cast of characters here are literally incomparable to any other sitcom. It really is the best of British comic acting. You are the true love of my life, my love, my love. What? <laughs> Someone, Someone you are the only one for me. I merely want to hug and kiss you. What? No one told me you had a beard? Number two, Top Gear. It started as a fairly routine motoring magazine program, but over time, and especially since a 2002 relaunch, Top Gear has become one of the most successful entertainment shows on the BBC. Even though I was driving on lava that had fallen days ago, it was still red hot, and the Top Gear vodka tire cooling system was working overtime. Of course, everything on the show revolves around cars. Here we go, Reliant Robin. Oh no, I've crashed it. I've crashed it almost immediately. I mean, literally 20 feet. There are road test reviews, features covering the world's most prestigious manufacturers, and then there are lots of funny, farcical, and often controversial road trips, races, and automobile experiments. We're neck and neck! In general, this show rarely lets its finger slip from the pulse, and never lets its foot off the pedal. Mercifully though, the road soon straightened out, which meant Hammond and I could absolutely fly. Right, go, 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 go! Oh, what a machine! Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. All the time he's been waiting his chance, now he's ready. How sure are you? Vivian, you might have washed your hand! <laughs> Me? Depressed? No, of course not, Del. I'm on top of the world. I feel like a born-again eunuch. Thirty-two pounds. 32 pence. <laughs> Those were my strumps. <laughs> Is that all? Good heavens, that's a disaster. Well, why do they make hexagon shapes? The hexagonal form uses the minimum amount of wax for the maximum amount of storage in a given area. Number one, Doctor Who. I'm the doctor, by the way. What's your name? Rose. Nice to meet you, Rose. Run for your life. You could search through all of time and space, sift through all the timey-wimey stuff, but you'll never find a BBC show better than Doctor Who. I thought you were going to explain everything. He didn't give me a chance, did he? There's something very strangely wrong here. First aired in 1963 and reintroduced for modern audiences in 2005, it's become a hugely significant part of British popular culture. Who are you then, Doctor? What are you called? What sort of alien are you? I'm just a doctor. From what planet? <laughs> well, it's not as if you know what it is. Millions tune in every week to follow the Doctor, his TARDIS, and his companions as they fight Daleks, Cybermen, and anything else the universe can muster. I am too young! Bow ties are cool, but this show is brilliant. And now, to quote the Time Lord himself, Anozi. As an old Earth saying, Captain, a phrase of great power and wisdom and consolation to the soul in times of need. What's that then? Allons-y! Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite BBC show? Sometimes it must be difficult not to feel as if 
You really are a cliff when fascists keep trying to push you over it. For more Best of British Top Tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Oh! <laughs> No, you hit him on the head, you naughty moose! <laughs>